So Haemophilus influ influenzae was the uh, first genome that was uh, published. The project started at uh, the Institute of Genomic Research under the leadership of Greg Venter, uh, same Venter whose name we see later on in the publication of the Human Genome Project. At that time, uh, there was a method already established that was the uh, shotgun sequencing method. And uh, this project was actually also testing the reliability and efficiency of this method. Uh, so by utilizing the shotgun sequencing method, so they sequenced this genome, which was about 1.8 million base pairs. It took nine months and the cost was around 1 million uh, US dollars. Uh, it, it, so the success of this project paved the way for the uh, sequencing of the other organisms. Um, these uh, ASDB, uh, that was the first genome databases in which uh, C. elegan uh, genome was put. So that was uh, known as the first database uh, for, for uh, genome sequences. Uh, it was established by Richard Durbin and Thierry Miegi, the same Durbin whose book we will consult uh, in the later half of the course, that is the biological sequence analysis. Here is the ASTV web page. So you can find the C. elegans, which is down there. It's a worm and then other organisms. Here, which is the, the Arabidopsis thaliana uh, information resource. That is the database for Arabidopsis and SCB, Saccharomyces genome database, uh, actually um, use this system which was there in this ASDB. Human Genome uh, Project started as an initially as a pilot project um, by Department of Energy, USA in 1986. Uh, two organizations, one was National Human Genome Research Institute and NHGRI, a government uh, funded agency through NIH, National Institute of Health, um, under the leadership of Francis Collins. And then it was also joined by another commercial organization, Celera, um, Celera Genomics, commonly known as Celera, that was led by Craig Venter. So both of them, they claimed that they sequenced this full genome and uh, there was the issue about the who did it first and who did the major part in it. But later on, it was resolved by President Bill Clinton at that time, and then they published it together somewhere back in year 2000. So in the end, they concluded that there are total 3.4 billion bases which are sequenced at a rate of $1 per base. While we have those genomes available, we want to see their graphical views where we can get the reports, we can get the idea about where different genes are located. So in order to do that, we need to make something which we call it as genome browsers. So genome browsers are actually the web pages uh, where we can look into the different features within our genomes. So UCSC is one of the examples, which is the University of California, Santa Cruz, which is the biggest genome browser and where we can have the information. So on the top, we see a chromosome and down below, we see those different lines, which we call them as different tracks. So there are different tracks for say, for example, SNPs, there are different tracks for different genes and ESTs, etc. So we can look into and zoom into different regions of the genome by using those genome browsers. So in the end, we conclude that the success of Haemophilus uh, influenzae uh, that paved the way for the sequencing of the genomes and Human Genome Project is, uh, we can say it was accomplished by NHGRI and Celera. Both, uh, they were working independent from one another. And genome browsers, uh, they help explore different regions of the genome.